ever feel like you're stuck. You right. Know? Like you just can't take flight. Uh-huh. I know that feeling. Well, today we're going deep on a bird that throws that whole idea right out the window. Oh, yeah. The green jungle fell. We found this awesome YouTube video all about them. And let me tell you, yeah. these birds are anything but stuck. They're pretty incredible. Our mission today is to uh, learn all about these these jungle chickens and maybe even get a little inspiration along the way, right? Sounds good to me. So right off the bat, this video hit me with something, something pretty crazy. What's that? Green jungle fowl, they, they can fly. You're kidding? I'm serious. And not just like, you know, a little hop over a fence. These guys are strong flyers. Wow. Capable of like island hopping, island hopping across Indonesia. I mean, I can barely keep my basil alive on the windowsill. Right. And these birds are out there conquering islands. Pretty amazing. It really is. It's like, you know, we think of chickens and we picture, I don't know, like a, a plump bird in a coop. Yeah. But these these green jungle fowl, they're they're like the wild ancestors of our domestic chickens. And they've held on to those flying skills, which makes sense, you know, for survival and all that. So it's not just about escaping like a hungry fox in the in the hen house or something. No, no, it's way more than that. So what are some of those evolutionary pressures that that led to these birds becoming such amazing flyers? Well, picture their environment. Dense jungles, you know, islands spread out all over the place, predators everywhere. They need to be able to fly to find mates, discover new food sources, escape danger. Their, great. their whole body is built for it. Their wings, their size, it all works together. And speaking of size, they aren't as big as I always imagined, are they? What, mm. What's the average green jungle fowl look like? Yeah, you know, they're actually smaller than some domesticated breeds, like like those fluffy silkies. Oh, really? The males usually weigh a bit over two pounds, females a bit less, maybe one and a half, and their wingspan, yep. roughly two feet. So that lighter, more streamlined build, it helps them zip around in the air. That makes sense. Yeah. So they can fly, mm -hmm. but where are they flying to? What's their, their natural habitat like? Well, they're originally from Southeast Asia, Java to be exact. Okay. But now you can find them on a bunch of Indonesian islands. They love those tropical forests, you know? Yeah. Especially the ones with thick undergrowth and, and get this bamboo thickets. Bamboo thickets. That reminds me of something else that was super interesting in that video. Their diet? They're omnivores, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And they aren't picky eaters either. <laughs> no kidding. Seeds, fruits, insects, small vertebrates. They even eat mice. Mice. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Chickens eating mice. I never would have guessed that. It's wild, right? These birds are adaptable. They have to be. By eating whatever they can find, they can survive in places where food might be scarce. Smart. But even with their awesome flying skills and their diverse palate, I imagine it's not all, you know, sunshine and roses in the jungle, right? Oh, definitely not. The video mentioned a whole slew of predators they need to look out for. What what are some of the biggest threats they face? Well, you've got hawks circling above, yeah, you... snakes slithering through the undergrowth, mongooses. The jungle is full of dangers for a small bird. And because of that constant threat, they've had to develop some pretty incredible survival strategies. Like what? Well, their roosting habits are a good example. Oh, yeah. This is the part that blew my mind. They roost in trees, like chickens in trees. I always picture them on the ground, you know, scratching around. I know, right? It seems strange at first, but it's actually a brilliant defense mechanism. It is. They like to roost in bamboo trees, often 15 feet or higher. Wow. That puts them way out of reach for most ground predators. Plus, it gives them a great view of the surrounding area. Like a high-rise apartment with a view. Uh-huh. Exactly. So besides their treetop living, what other uh, defense mechanisms do these birds have? Well, camouflage is a big one. Their feathers blend in perfectly with the forest floor, so they're hard to spot. And they have this amazing system of warning calls, too. Oh, cool. If one bird spots danger, they'll let the whole flock know. Safety in numbers. <laughs> so the video also talked about their social structure and how they breed. What's a typical green jungle fowl flock like? Well, they live in small groups, usually two to five birds with a dominant male in charge. Okay. Now here's a surprising thing. Unlike our domestic chickens, which lay tons of eggs, green jungle fowl females lay surprisingly few. Oh, really? How many are we talking? Only about three eggs per clutch and less than a dozen in a whole year. That doesn't seem like very many, yeah. especially in such a, a, a tough environment. Why wouldn't they want more offspring? Well, think about it this way. Raising chicks takes a lot of energy. 
And resources are limited in the wild, right? Right. So by focusing on a smaller number of offspring, they can put more energy into making sure those chicks survive. It's about quality over quantity. That's a really interesting point. So they're strategic about it. And speaking of strategy, the video made their mating season sound pretty intense. Oh, it's a sight to see. From June to November, things get get pretty wild. How so? Well, the males start battling each other for breeding rights. They use their sharp beaks and spurs. And these fights, they can get, get vicious. Oh, wow. Sometimes the males can even be killed during these clashes. Talk about high-stakes dating. It's amazing. Chickens that fly, eat mice, live in treetop apartments, and have epic mating battles. It's incredible how much we can learn from a bird that, you know, most people think of as just a regular farmyard resident. Exactly. Their story is a testament to their resilience, their adaptability. They found a way to thrive in a really tough environment. It makes you wonder, you know, are we as humans sometimes too quick to feel stuck? That's a great question. Maybe we can learn a thing or two from these green jungle fowl. Embrace those challenges, be resourceful, and never give up. I love that. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. My pleasure. This has been fascinating. <laughs> green jungle fowl. Who knew? <laughs> All right. See you next time. See you, Lenny.